Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is your Don't be pointing at me. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you once again by FroPack 4 with 14 all new custom Lightroom presets. And instead of me telling you how good they are, here are some more new testimonials. Hey, FroPack 4 is awesome. The face and skin enhanced preset alone are worth it. Love C41. These have legitimately been one click and done for me today. I am mind blown. And it's the best pack of presets I've ever owned. You guys outdid yourself. Kaleidoscope and Thick are the best. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash fropack4 to get fropack4 or the Grand Slam bundle, which are on sale right now. And if you have a preset testimonial of your own, please leave it down below as a comment. First up, Blackmagic has released their first full frame cinema camera, and there's only one reason why this made the news, and that's going to have to wait for a few more seconds for me to tell you what it is. Blackmagic has chosen to go away from the super 35 millimeter sensor in favor of a full frame 648 by 4032 pixel sensor, which is close to three times larger than Super 35. Blackmagic says that a larger sensor allows users to capture videos with a shallower depth of field, offering a more cinematic look. Duh. Now that's kind of a departure from the days of trying to justify smaller sensors. But Jared, the GH5 is the best video camera ever. It's really not. I mean, if you want your backgrounds to be indefinitely in focus, then go for it. Anyway, now back to the one reason I am doing this story, and that is Black Magic has joined the Earl Mount Alliance. Alliance, 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 Alliance. Uh, and that also means that the Alliance now stands to sell at least 10 more lenses hey! and live on to fight another day, unlike Micro Four Thirds, which is probably taking its last breath as we speak. Now, I do want to say that Blackmagic has done a fantastic job with the direction they've gone and the direction that they're going. What are your thoughts about this? Let me know down below. And don't yell at me about the L Mount Alliance. Next up, Tamron updated their 70 to 180 2.8G lens with the G2. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what could possibly have changed from the G to the G2? Nothing! No, it's not nothing, it's, it's actually a lot. Now, when the 70 to 180 2.8 came out, it was a breath of fresh air for Sony E-mount shooters who couldn't afford to drop $2,800 for the 70 to 200 2.8 at the time, but still wanted to be in the 2.8 game for only $1,200. So what changed? For one, they added vibration compensation, AKA image stabilization in the lens. By adding image stabilization, you are adding a little bit of size and weight. Is it worth it? But to me, the trade-off is well worth it. Let me work it. Well, Tamron also went ahead and redesigned the entire optical formula to include 20 elements in 15 groups versus 19 in 14 of the old one. This along with image stabilization should equal sharper images. So how much extra will it cost over the original G? But a G -bang, baby. It will only set you back an extra $100 because this lens is $1,300 instead of $1,200 and will be available in October for Sony E-mounts to start and hopefully at some point for the Nikon Z-mount as well. Salty. Next up, up, I want to quickly bring up the new Fuji GFX 102 medium format camera. Now I bring this up because I've been shooting its predecessor for the last month and enjoying the quirks and features. Now with that being said, I had no idea that a new version was on its way. Insert Fuji joke about them not reaching out to me. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna report the news. The GFX 102 has a new body design with a revised 102 megapixel sensor that offers twice the readout speeds of the GFX 100S. This added readout speed allows for improved continuous shooting, better autofocus, and even better video. Now I can tell you that the GFX 100S was not the fastest shooting camera in the world, but then again, I was able to get five frames per second with a freaking medium format camera. Sure, the autofocus is hit or miss, more miss than hit when it comes to action, but when it does hit, like this photo of Harper hitting a home run, it absolutely crushes. Now I'm well aware that this camera wasn't designed for sports, Christy. but I can tell you it gives your images a dimension you just can't 
get with anything else. Now the new body can shoot up to eight frames per second, adds AI focus tracking, though I'm not sure some of the lenses will be able to keep up with it, and now can add a battery grip. Now if you think this is the camera for you, it will set you back $7,500 in the US for body only, and something like $10 trillion in Canada. Do you think Fuji should send me one of these kits? Let me know down below. Tell them, hey Fuji, send the fro one of these kits. Insert podcast plug right here. Yep, we have a podcast. It's called Raw Talk. It comes out every Friday wherever you get your podcasts. So please give it a listen. And finally, Nikon has released their latest full frame camera and no, it's not the Z6 III. Introducing the Nikon ZF, a full frame retro style mirrorless camera that I already had a hands-on preview with. So if you haven't checked it out, the link will be down below in the description, but don't check it right now. Check it after photo news fix. Just do it! Nikon says that the ZF harmonizes a timeless aesthetic with the best of Nikon's next gen camera technology derived directly from the acclaimed Z8 and flagship Z9. Now it can't be like the Z8 or Z9 because it doesn't have a stack sensor. It actually has the same exact non-stack sensor as the Z6 and Z6 II. Now they go on to say, and I quote, at first glance, the ZF is a definitive statement in functional design that ignites the desire to craft an image. Functional design, you say? If it's so functional, why do I need to purchase a third-party accessory to add a place for my right hand and fingers to hold on to the damn thing properly without feeling like I'm gonna drop it? You literally feel like you're gonna hurt your hand when you hold it without the added accessory. Anyway, as I mentioned, the ZF reuses the same sensor from the Z6 and Z6 II, but now has moved to the Xpeed 7 processor that is found in the Z8 and Z9. Now this doesn't mean the Z8 and Z9 autofocus speeds will follow along, but it does mean that there is better autofocus than the Z7 VI is. Now the focus still does lag slightly behind in some places and had trouble finding the subject with a foreground distraction who was waving a wand. It found the wand and not the eye, unfortunately. But the image quality, well, that is top notch. Nikon's files are fantastic. Nikon Z Glass is fantastic and it continues to grow and be some of the best in the industry. Now, I love some of the images that I captured with the ZF. It's certainly fast shooting at up to 14 frames a second for RAW. And guess what it has? Oh shit, what? Two card slots, one SD and one micro SD. Now, micro SD tends to be extremely slow, but even shooting RAW plus JPEG fine, I never ran into any buffering issues. Now a micro SD card slot would not be my first choice, but the fact that it squeezes one in is definitely a welcomed bonus. Nice job, Nikon. Finally did something right. Phone, phone call, phone, phone call, phone call, phone, phone call, nope. They're leaving me alone. Personally, I'm not a fan of the retro camera movement as I don't buy a camera to be a fashion accessory. I buy it to be a tool that allows me to capture images. Listen, Nikon, you don't need to ignore 50 years of ergonomic improvements in your quest to go retro. You can have all the dials you want, just make it easy to hold. Now, I think Nikon shooters who are waiting for an improved Z6 III, I think they're gonna be upset with this release. But if you think this camera is for you, well, it's gonna be be priced just under $2,000 or the same price as the Z6 II, which means I don't think they're going to sell Z6 II's because who wants worse autofocus when you can have slightly better autofocus? Now, if you're an icon shooter, let me know your thoughts down below. Just don't try and rip on me because facts are facts. Fact is a term demanding an equal answer with a And there you have it, Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.